pharmacology mnemonics so pharmacology mnemonics means what some short forms or maybe some way by which you can remember these uh, topics as you all would be aware that pharmacology as it is said it's one of the most difficult subject in medical science besides being difficult it is quite dry in the initial stages it is quite volatile okay and uh, once you read it you will not be able to remember it and like uh, maybe i tell in many of my lectures that the conventional book which many of the students read is tripathi kd tripathi it's a nice book and as the book's author's name suggests okay tripathi means you have to do the reading like in hindi they say paath aapko iska paath karna hai so you have to read the topics three times three or three triangle okay so you have to read this topic of pharmacology at least three times okay to understand the topics to remember the topics to reproduce the topic in your examination and come out with flying colors okay but it's a very difficult task to follow such reading such a huge book okay so to make the things easier like uh, there are some mnemonics which have been created which will help you memorize the things and remember the things and it's it's a type of a smart work as uh, some people know uh, initially people used to do a hard work okay maybe used to slog for 10 hours 12 hours and score 60 70% of marks maybe any, any of the subjects present generation is quite smart in that manner so they just read for maybe 2 or 3 hours and manage to get 60 70 marks so one fourth of the efforts and similar results okay so this will help you in making the things more smarter and help you in remembering this dry subject volatile subject of pharmacology so with this brief of what is the logic of this pharmacology mnemonics many of you must have been told about some of the pharmacology mnemonics by some of your teachers in your Uh, regular colleges so this is one more to add to those of this mnemonics okay so some mnemonics by which you can remember this uh, general pharmacology i have included many of these or most of these uh, important sections of pharmacology so starting with general pharmacology the mnemonics so which are the drugs with high first pass metabolism and many of these mnemonics will benefit you for remembering these drugs or the adverse effects or classifications or side effects or the uses not only for the theory but as you will be been made aware in some of the next slides that even for the viva purposes this will be of benefit okay so coming to the first one which are the drugs with high first pass metabolism many times in the viva you are faced with this question also from general pharmacology so how do you remember these drugs this is a mnemonic nitrates as i have highlighted over here nitrates have so h is capital h is bold large pre systemic metabolism so that is a mnemonic which you have to remember so what is nitrates nitrates okay what is h stand for h stands for hydrocortisone i am not sure how many of the audience have sort of uh, reached the third Uh, semester of the pharmacology i presume many of will be uh, reaching it now okay so whether this topic has been covered but with, at least from the general pharmacology knowledge your awareness of this uh, drug should be there so h for hydrocortisone l for the local anesthetic lignocaine pre for propenolol which is a beta blocker s for salbutamol which is a beta 2 agonist used for bronchial asthma and m for metabolism is morphine which is a most potent opioid analgesic so nitrates have large pre systemic metabolism that is a mnemonic for all these drugs which have a first pass metabolism therefore they have to be given either by sublingual route or maybe by a parenteral route so there is a first one then many times in the viva they can ask you can you tell me the significance mm -hmm. of protein binding so how do you remember that the code or the mnemonic is 4d like if you get four distinctions in your second phase or the second year okay so what is these 4d's or what are these 4d's 1d is by the protein binding 
increases the duration of action so drugs with high plasma protein binding are generally long acting in nature so they can be administered once a day okay so therefore the compliance will increase second d is that about distribution because they are bound to plasma protein drugs with high plasma protein binding will stay in the plasma itself and therefore they will not be easily distributed in the other peripheral parts therefore they have low distribution another d is displacement so drugs with high plasma protein binding can easily have a drug to drug displacement reactions with other drug having a high plasma protein binding so a lot of drug interactions can occur with drugs having this high plasma protein binding and fourth d is dialysis drugs with high plasma protein binding cannot be removed by dialysis so that can be a problem especially in cases of poisoning so these are some of the like mnemonics for the significance of plasma protein binding again a very important viva question are is that can you give me some names or examples of pro drugs so how do you remember it's a mnemonic or a code all prefer doing md in clinical subjects which is the sort of a norm nowadays not nowadays since the earlier time everyone wants to pursue a clinical subject except for a few people who go for a pre or a para clinical subject most prefer or all prefer doing md in clinical subjects so what is this maybe mnemonic stand for a for ace inhibitors that to not all ace inhibitors are pro drugs except captopril and lisinopril which are not pro drugs all the other ace inhibitors or angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors are pro drugs p stands for prednisone which is a corticosteroid proguanil which is anti malarial and our conventional ppis that is a uh, proton pump inhibitors like your omeprazole and pantoprazole etc d for dipivephrin dipivephrin is a pro drug for your adrenaline which is given topically in patients of glaucoma so d for dipivephrin md is m that is your mercaptopurine which is a anti cancer drug methyl dopa anti hypertensive drug and even minoxidil which is a anti hypertensive drugs besides being an anti hypertensive drug this minoxidil topically can also be used in patients of alopecia given topically it improves the hair growth d for dopamine or l dopa which is a precursor of dopamine used for patients of parkinsonism i for ionotropic can or inx which is used for tuberculosis this is used for anti cancer agent c for cyclophosphamide and anti cancer agent anti thyroid agent carbimazole and anti platelet drug your clopidogrel clopidogrel and s for sulfasalazine sulfasalazine can be used for patients of your irritable bowel uh, inflammatory bowel disorder like disorder uh, diseases okay so that those are the names of the pro drugs again very important viva question examples of enzyme uh, inducers is a mnemonic called as gprs cell phone okay so what does it stand for g for griseofulvin which is a anti fungal drug p for phenytoin r for an anti convulsant phenytoin rifampicin the anti tubercular drug nicotine for smoking cbz that is carbamazepine which is a anti epileptic drug like phenytoin and another anti epileptic p is phenobarbitone so those are ex examples of enzyme inducers inhibitors the code is vitamin k cannot cause enzyme inhibition so vitamin v is valproate which is a anti epileptic drug k for ketoconazole which is a anti fungal drug then uh, uh, what do you say c for cimetidine which is a drug for peptic ulcer like your another drug which is not an enzyme inhibitor that is ranitidine like you must have taken many a times in the past for your maybe acidity problems like okay? rantac which is a brand name c for the antibiotic quinolone ciprofloxacin e for the another antibiotic amongst the macrolide category that is erythromycin 
and I for INH, which is an anti TB drug. Then, drug induced hemolysis in G6 PD deficiency patient, which can lead to hemolysis. So, the code of the mnemonic is PINS MCQ. T for primaquine, again, I for isoniazid. Primaquine is anti malarial, isoniazid, anti TB drug. Antibiotics or local antibiotics like nitrofurantine and nalidixic acid, which are generally used for the for what is a urinary tract infection. S for sulfonamides, so those are the antibiotics. Minandiode, again, uh, uh, like a vitamin K like drug. C for chloroquine, anti malarial, and Q for quinine, which is also an anti malarial drug. So these are some of the drugs used for. Uh, uh, drugs which can cause hemolysis in G6 uh, G6P deficiency patients. Yeah, again, a similar in a diagrammatic way. So, our or my slides will contain a combination of the slides which are shown previously and these type of maybe visual, maybe mnemonics which have been included. So, mixture of these slides, you can remember from these type of slides also. Okay, same thing, enzyme inducer, GPRS, cell phone. And enzyme inhibitors again, vitamin K cannot cause enzyme inhibition. Okay, so I'll not repeat this slide. Then phase one reaction is your uh, orchard. Okay, orchard, it's a flower or maybe uh, this thing. Okay, so orchards and for oxidation, reduction, cyclization, aliphatic and aromatic hydroxylation and deamination. Then phase two reactions include or the mnemonic is games. Okay, so G stands for glucuronidation, the imp most important one, then glutathionation, glycination, A for acetylation, M for methylation, and S for sulfation. So those are the phase one and phase two metabolic reaction. Sometimes a viva in the viva question is asked, give some examples of hit and run drugs. So what are these drugs? The drugs whose terminal half-life, okay, the end half-life is longer than its biological half-life is or are hit and uh, run drugs. For example, proton pump inhibitors like omeprazole have a short half-life of five to two to five hours only, but biological half-life, but its terminal half-life or effective half-life is nearly 24 to 36 hours because of this irreversible binding pattern. That's why they are called as hit and run. So just like as you know in a maybe scenario, if a vehicle dashes you, okay, so it's a hit and run scenario. And unfortunately, if the person dies, he is put in a morgue. That's why the mnemonic of morgue. So what is morgue? Morgue is monoamine, M stands for monoamine oxidase inhibitors, which are used for depression. Omeprazole is a PPI, reserpine, and guanathidine are both earlier use or older antihypertensive agents. Then what is therapeutic index? Okay, so therapeutic index, the mnemonic is TILE, T-I-L-E. T-I stands for therapeutic index. L is standing for LD50 divided by the ED50. LD50 is the lethal dose 50 which is a concentration at which 50% of the animals which are exposed to their drug will get killed, lethal. It will be lethal to the enzyme, uh, to the animals. ED50 is the effective dose 50, which is a dose which is known, known to cause effect in 50% of the people, or in this case, actually it's a animals, okay? So that is the therapeutic index formula. Higher the therapeutic index, safer is the drug, lower the therapeutic index, less safer is the drug. Okay, so this is the mnemonic for therapeutic index formula. Drugs showing zero order kinetics. Okay, so zero order, there is two type of kinetics, zero order kinetics, first order kinetics, and even mixed order kinetics. So which are the only few, most of them will show the first order kinetics, only a few of them will show zero order kinetics, so how do you remember that? So zero watt bulb or zero watt power as we all use maybe in this bulb or electricity, maybe terminology, zero watt power. So W-A-T-T-P. So what is this mnemonic? This is a bulb over here for you to remember. 
So W for warfarin, that is the anticoagulant, oral anticoagulant. A for alcohol and aspirin. T for the what is a anti-asthmatic drug theophylline. And another T for tolbutamide, which is an anti-diabetic agent. And the P stands for phenytoin. Okay, which is an anti-epileptic or anti-convulsant drug. So these are some drugs which show zero order kinetics. That complete general pharmacology. Now coming to autonomic nervous system pharmacology. So which are the drugs or the beta blockers to be avoided in which conditions? Okay, or what are the contraindications of this non-selective beta blockers like propenolol? How to remember A, B, C, D? So these are the important contraindications for the use of non-selective beta blockers. A for asthma, B for AV block conditions. C for congestive heart failure and D for diabetes mellitus. So in all these conditions, beta, non-selective beta blockers like propenolol, the conventional one, is contraindicated. So that is the mnemonic for this uh, topic. Okay. Names of cardioselective blockers. Again, an important viva question. So how do you remember the mnemonic is new beta blockers acting exclusively at myocardium. So what are these full forms? New or N for nebivolol. It's one of the most cardioselective beta blocker. B or beta for bitoxolol. D for bisoprolol. A for acebutolol. E for esmolol, one of the most short acting beta blocker used as an antiarrhythmic agent. Or sometimes in cases of a severe hypertensive crisis or emergency, A for atinolol, M or myocardia, myo is metaprolol, one of the most frequently used cardioselective beta blockers in clinical practice, and C for celiprolol. So these are some of the names of cardioselective beta blocking agents. Beta blockers which are safe in bradycardia, okay. As you know, beta blockers, as you saw in the previous slide, is contraindicated in patients. Non-selective beta blockers are contraindicated in the patient of bradycardia. But which are the beta blockers which are generally safe in bradycardia patients is this mnemonic. C-O-P-P-A means contains partial agonistic activity. Because they contain a partial agonistic activity at the beta receptor, specifically beta 1 receptor, they will not block, they will have an agonistic activity at the beta 1 receptors which are present in the heart. Therefore, they will not ca cause bradycardia, they will maintain a normal heart rate as against the non-cardioselective beta blockers. So, which are these agents which are safe in patients of bradycardia is these agents. Okay, the mnemonic is contains partial agonistic activity. CO is uh, C stands for celiprolol, O stands for oxprinolol, P stands for either pindolol or penbutolol, A stands for alpilinol, and another A standing for acebutolol. So these are the drugs which are relatively safe in patients of bradycardia and can be given. Some beta blockers with antiarrhythmic activity. How to remember? So, drug or beta blockers with antiarrhythmic active activity, sorry, they possess membrane stabilizing or local anesthetic properties. So, which are these agents? P of possess or propenolol, which has a maximum antiarrhythmic activity, M of membrane, that is metaprolol. L of local anesthetic property, local for labetalol, which is also a drug used in patients of hypertensive emergencies. A of anesthesia, that is acebutolol. And P of property stands for pindolol. So these are some of the beta blockers used for arrhythmias or for antiarrhythmic activity. Again, a visual maybe mnemonics, how to remember. Where are the beta 1 and the beta 2 receptors present? Beta 1 receptor is present in the heart. Beta 2 receptors are present in the lungs. How to remember that? We have one lung 
one sorry <laughs> one heart and two lungs okay so one is present in the heart beta 1 receptors are present in the heart and beta 2 receptors are present in the lung so this visual can make you remember beta 1 in the heart and beta 2 in the lungs how to remember the functions of this alpha and beta receptors okay so alpha causes constriction beta causes dilatation so alpha c a for c constriction b for d a c b d so this blood vessel is constricted by alpha like this and this blood vessel is dilated like this like beta over here as you can see over here so these are some maybe actions of uh, adrenaline or catecholamines on stimulating the alpha or the beta receptors okay side effect of beta agonist which are the beta agonist generally all these anti asthmatic agents are also beta agonist like your salbutamol salmeterol formeterol etc etc so the side effects are three t's one is tolerance tachycardia and tremor okay so these are the three t's which are the side effects of beta agonists beta blockers with uh yeah same thing with the intrinsic sympathomimetic activity that is with the, which are safe in patients of uh, bradycardia or again contains partial agonistic activity or partial intrinsic sympathomimetic activity as we discussed in the previous slides these are the same ones okay seliprolol oxyprenolol pindolol penbutalol alprinolol and asbutalol so these are the drugs beta blockers with which are safe in bradycardia or with having intrinsic sympathomimetic activity how to remember easily the actions on stimulation of the muscarinic receptors as by now you would be aware there are five different type of muscarinic receptors m1 to m5 so m1 up m2 down 3 up 4 down 5 up okay so this is m as you can say this is in the shape of m so m1 m3 m5 are on top of the curves of m so that's why they are excitatory in nature they are excited therefore they are plus they are positive therefore they are excitatory in nature whereas m2 and m4 are relatively inhibitory in nature okay so these are how the ways by which we can remember the activities or actions of acetylcholine on stimulation of the different muscarinic receptors but clinically important to remember are m1 m2 and m3 only you don't have to remember m4 and m5 okay that is more important clinically m1 to m3 4 and 5 are not so clinically important okay we'll discuss this maybe at a later uh, slide also uh, side effects of atropine yeah beta 1 selective blockers like again a slight repetitions maybe some other people can remember in this way also is a short form or mnemonic of beam you can see the light beam over here that is bisoprolol esmolol etinolol and metoprolol so beta 1 selective blockers okay and uh, side this actually should come in cns but it's may be included over here the side effects of mu type of opioid receptors as you know there are different type of opioid receptors like mu kappa delta okay so the side effects associated with the stimulation of the mu receptors that's what this show number here the cat it's mu 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 and some people are scared of this mu 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 okay therefore the mnemonic is scared s for sedation c for very important constipation is a side effect analgesia that is it is a pain killer important respiratory depression euphoria that is a feeling of happiness therefore it is sort of a uh, drug of abuse or drug of dependence that's why the next one the d for dependency so all these are the effect, receptor effects of your opioid mu receptor stimulation yes as you saw in the previous slide i didn't take that side effects of atropine or anticholinergic drugs are the patient can't pee that is difficult in urination patient can't see because of mydriasis he has a blurring of vision patient can't Pit because he has dryness of mouth, and patient can't shit because he has constipation. So this is the way by which you can easily remember the anticholinergic side effects. 
the other mnemonic i just showed in the previous slide also is blind as a bat because it has dilated pupils red as a bead because of the vasodilatation or the flushing of the skin hot as a hare because of hyperthermia because of vaso this thing uh, this thing what is say constriction of the sweat glands there is no dissipation of the sweat therefore the heat is maintained inside the body therefore there is hyperthermia there is dryness as bone because of the same logic and mad as a hatter that is the patient will have hallucinations and agitation therefore the patient will have madness like behavior so these are some of the side effects associated with anticholinergic type of drugs like your atropine some of the side effects of ssri full form of ssri is selective serotonin receptor inhibitors some of the important clinical use examples of the drugs include fluoxetine citalopram s citalopram and sertraline so some of the important side effects include 3s that time we saw 3t's okay for the tolerance etc okay uh now these are three s that is stomach upset the patient will get nausea and vomiting sexual dysfunctions can be seen and the patient can develop serotonin syndrome so these are some of the important three s side effects of ssris okay antidepressants you'll see the uses of these later on also now coming to the autocoids okay all these histamine prostaglandin etc okay so what are the anticholinergic uses of antihistamines okay some of these antihistamines of the especially of the first generation like chlorpheniramine diphenhydramine hydramine diamine hydrinate etc besides being used for anti allergic properties because of its classical antihistamine activities also it possesses anticholinergic properties so what are the uses because of its anticholinergic properties is how to remember these possess anticholinergic properties okay so anticholinergic uses of antihistamines can be remembered by the mnemonic possess anticholinergic properties so p for the parkinsonism mild cases these agents can be used centrally acting antihistamines then a for an acute muscular dystonia means the patient will develop some extra pyramidal side effects acutely okay then c for common cold that is normally used frequently and p for prophylaxis of motion sickness okay so all these are the anticholinergic uses of antihistaminic agents then aspirin which comes under autocoids the nsaids the side effects can be remembered by the mnemonic of aspirin itself okay so a for allergy like reactions that is urticaria patient will develop rashes or maybe itching of the skin because of its allergic nature of aspirin so a for allergy because of its anti platelet activity patient can develop s for susceptibility to bleeding p for the most common peptic ulcer or hyperacidity type of reactions i for idiosyncratic reactions r for ray syndrome which is classically seen when aspirin is administered in a small child having fever because of some viral infection and this is one of the frequently asked question in viva that why is aspirin contraindicated in a small child or children or uh, age of age of children or what is ray syndrome so these are some of the questions which can be asked in concern with your aspirin then uh i is ringing in the ear so r is not r actually over if we have taking over here which this is the i which i have taken of the ringing and it is also called as tinnitus and n for nephropathy okay so these are the side effects of aspirin and uh, just to add one more thing is that these are what maybe we have as mnemonics but you too can if you are maybe very maybe creative you too can be create some maybe mnemonics of your own or modify these mnemonics the basic purpose is that you should be able to remember these uh, maybe pharmacological aspects of these drugs be it whatever way not necessarily by these mnemonic only you can create your own mnemonics taking this as a base or of your own also 
okay so how are nsaids classified by the mnemonic painted by sophia okay so this is sophia painted is three p's propionic acid derivatives pyrrole derivatives pyrazolone derivatives all these p by is b benzoxazine derivatives s of sophia for salicylates o oxycam derivatives f we have taken of uh, phenamates or mefenamic acid derivatives i of, of for indole acetic acid derivatives a for aryl acetic acid derivatives and anthralic anthranilic acid derivatives so these are the classification of your nsaids okay which is frequently asked in the examination classify nsaids mention the pharmacological actions or the uses and the adverse effects of your aspirin so these are the conventional very frequently asked questions of your nsaid contraindication bars you can remember this small child playing on the bars okay double bars okay so bars is b for bleeding because of the peptic ulcer a for the asthma r for renal nephropathy s for stomach that is it can lead to peptic ulcers beneficial effects of nsa or inhibition of prostaglandins that is nsaids beneficial effects is five a's okay a one is analgesia anti pyretic effect anti inflammatory effect anti thrombotic or anti platelet effect and effect on the arteriosis that is the ductus arteriosus it will close the patent ductus arteriosus whereas the prostaglandins will keep it open so aspirin can also be used to close the patient's uh, the child's patent ductus arteriosus so these are the beneficial effects of the nsaids by inhibition of the prostaglandin synthesis again treatment of acute and chronic gout that is hyperuricemia okay acute and chronic you can remember a c or ac our ventilation ac okay so acute gout ac you use colchicine okay for you give allopurinol for chronic gout ac okay so acute and chronic okay ac and the most classical symptom is swelling of the great toe because what happens is that urate crystals because they are crystalline in nature they are heavier than water and because of that it will be pulled down by gravity to the lower parts of the body therefore the most important maybe like a joint which is affected is metatarsophalangeal joint therefore the patient will have swelling redness and inflammation of the great toe so treatment of acute gout acute colchicine and allopurinol for chronic gout drugs which can lead to hyperuricemia or gout is a mnemonic lead can poison lead can poison p so l that is l dopa used for parkinsonism e for anti tb drug ethambutol aspirin diuretics okay can lead to hyperuricemia uh, immunosuppressant cyclosporine alcohol nicotinic acid anti uh, what do you say drugs for anti lipidemic agent and anti tb drug pyrazinamide so lead can poison so this is the lead okay tumbler or a can okay lead can big can which can poison okay so drugs which cause hyperuricemia coming to the important system that is a cardiovascular system okay digoxin sorry just a minute uh, contraindications of digoxin okay remember the code contraindicated in a weak heart okay basically digoxin is given in a weak heart only but how to remember digitalist is contraindicated in a weak heart so c for carditis any patient having myocarditis in is increased calcium hypercalcemia w for wpw syndrome or wolf parkinson white syndrome e for elderly a for partial av block or av block r for renal failure and t for thyroid dysfunction which can be either hypo or hyperthyroidism 
So those are some of the important contraindications for digoxin therapy. Properties of ACE inhibitors. Many a times, this is a very frequent question, both in theory as well as in the VIVA. What are the side effects of ACE inhibitor therapy? So you can remember the mnemonic captopril. There are different, maybe textbooks which give different mnemonics. Whichever you find suitable or which you, by which you can remember, you can use it. Okay. Here I've used this mnemonic C for dry cough or cough, which is dry in nature, irritating in nature, caused because of the increased levels of bradykinin. A for angioedema, the swelling of the lips and the uh, larynx. P, these are the properties. Mind you, these are not a side effect. These are properties of ACE inhibitors. Okay. P over here stands for pro-drugs. As I told you in the previous slides, many of the ACE, uh, ACE inhibitors are pro-drugs. Okay. So here P stands for pro-drugs. If it is side effect of ACE inhibitors, you can use P for proteinuria, which is a side effect. O for orthostatic hypotension, especially when it is combined with a diuretic because the blood pressure will fall down to a greater extent. Another P for, P for a pregnancy, when it is contraindicated. It is teratogenic in nature, therefore it is contraindicated in P for pregnancy. Again, in a, it is contraindicated in R for bilateral renal artery stenosis. It is again contraindicated in patients with increased potassium, that is hyperkalemia. And this is the properties. It lowers the formation because it's an ACE inhibitor. It lowers the formation of angiotensin 2, which is a mechanism of action. In some textbooks, L stands for loss of taste. Okay, that is, it can cause dysgeisia. That is, the patient will lose the, his or her sense of tasting. Okay, some people use here T as teratogenicity also. So, there are different ways by which you can mention the properties or side effects of associated with ACE inhibitor therapy. Adverse effects of amiodarone. No, amiodarone is a class 3 antiarrhythmic. It is one of the broad spectrum antiarrhythmic, quite frequently used. Okay. So again, in VIVA, they can be asked side effects of amiodarone therapy. The mnemonic is the periphery of my lung, liver and cornea is photosensitive. Okay. That is TH standing for thyroid dysfunction. It can be both hypo as well as hyperthyroidism, which are the adverse effects because M iodine contains iodine, I O D A M I O D A R O N E. So A M I O D, iodine. Therefore, it can lead to either hypo or hyperthyroidism. Peripheral neuropathy. My is myocardial depression. Lung, lung fibrosis or pulmonary fibrosis, liver toxicity, especially fibrosis, that is cirrhosis, corneal micro deposits and photosensitivity. So those are some of the important adverse effects associated with amiodarone therapy. Drug causing gynecomastia are by the mnemonic DISCO, D for digitalis, I for INH, that is the anti-TB agent, S for diuretic potassium spiron, di, uh, spiring, spiring diuretic, that is spironolactone, C for H2 receptor antagonist, that is cimetidine, like I told you previously, ranitidine, but ranitidine or rantac will not cause gynecomastia because cimetidine, cimetidine has enzyme inhibitory properties and O for estrogens. Estrogen is also spelled as O-E-S-T-R-O-G-E-N-S. So, estrogen. So, these are some of the drugs which causes gynecomastia side effects. Besides that, other drugs include antifungal, your ketoconazole and some anti-testosterone agents. Okay. So, those are drugs causing gynecomastia. Then, drugs used for the treatment of hypertension in pregnancy, like your uh, preeclampsia, is mnemonic, better mother care during hypertensive pregnancy. So better B for beta blockers like labetalol, M for methyl dopa, C for clonidine, okay, like central antihypertensive agent, D for dihydropyridine, 
like your amlodipine, nifedipine, etc. H hypertensive that is hydralazine. Pregnancy P that is prazosine, which is an alpha receptor blocker. Okay, so those are the drugs which can be used for hypertension during pregnancy. Drugs which are used for the treatment of bradycardia and hypotension is an idea. Okay, so here you can see a scientist or a person having an idea for a patient having hypotension because of that she is having giddiness or because of bradycardia she is having this giddiness. So this doctor has an idea to treat this patient of bradycardia and hypotension. I for isoprenaline, which is a catecholamine. D for dopamine. E for E for epinephrine and A for atropine sulfate that is a anticholinergic drug. So idea treatment for bradycardia and hypotension. Again the same thing. Okay, shown diagrammatically the side effects of your amiodarone therapy, class three antiarrhythmic drug. Another mnemonic is that you can see over here. The previous one is different. This is slightly different. Potassium channel blocker makes liver and nerve phototoxic. Okay, so all these are the same things, but a different. Someone has made a different mnemonic. So as I told you previously, you also can make a different mnemonic. Maybe which you find this, which can be better. You can make that too. Okay. So that is the amiodarone uh, therapy. Which are the classes of antiarrhythmic drugs from one A? You can remember Queen proclaims or has a right to dissolve pyramid. Okay. So what is that Queen? That is quinidine. Proclaims that is procainamide, which is an antiarrhythmic agent, and diisopyramide can also be used as a class one A antiarrhythmic. Class one B, preferably I buy Lido's Mexican toffee. Lido's are chocolates, so preferably P for phenytoin. Lido is lidocaine, Mexican that is mexilitine, and Toffee is tokenide. Tokenide. Okay. So those are the class one B antiarrhythmics. Class three is so M I do. So is sotalol. M I is M I O daron. And do is dofilitide. So those are the class three anti uh, arrhythmic agents. Beta two agents are smart in nature. So as you can see, this is a smart maybe idea. So beta two agents are smart in nature. S for salbutamol or salmeterol, M for metaproteinolol, A for albuterol, R for ritodrine, and T for terbutaline. So these are some of the examples of beta two agonists. Beta blockers. One more way by which you can remember is the nepal prime minister so as you can see this is the prime minister maybe with the hat this typical nepali hat or a cap okay so the nepal prime minister t for timolol n for nadolol e for esmolol p for pindolol a for atenolol l for labetalol prime p for propanolol and minister m for metoprolol so these are the names of the beta blockers to remember again a reputation the main contraindications for beta blocker therapy is a b c d that time we only discussed a b c and d now this is a b c d e a for asthma b for heart b block that is heart block copd diabetes mellitus and electrolyte imbalance especially hyperkalemia so over here you, in all these conditions you stop the beta blocker from being given so those are the contraindications of beta blocker therapy yeah again this is the same thing selective beta blockers new beta blockers acting at exclusively at the myocardium okay drugs which can lead to cardio dilated cardiomyopathy is again with the mnemonic a d okay three d's can lead to cardiomyopathy two d's for causing one d for treatment So drugs causing are anti-cancer drugs starting with D that is doxorubicin and donorubicin, which is prevented with the drug again starting from D that is dexro dexrazoxane dexrazoxane. Okay, so those are the uh, drugs remembered for dilated cardiomyopathy. 
again uh, contraindications of digital is in this way repeated drugs causing hyperglycemia or diabetes like conditions diabetes are the people need hard candies or sweet uh, things okay so the people need hard candies the p tacrolimus p protease inhibitors tacrolimus is immunosuppressant protease inhibitors are your anti hiv drugs niacin is a anti again uh, lipid lowering drug hydrochlorothiazide which is a diuretic and corticosteroids so these are the drugs which can frequently lead to hyperglycemia so whenever you are treating these patients of hyperglycemia you should be asking them the history of consumption of any of these drugs especially hydrochlorothiazide or your corticosteroids which is frequently used in clinical practice how do you manage a patient of psvd that is paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia that is their tachycardia which is above the level of ventricles which comes in paroxysms that is comes in bouts like our bouts of cough bouts of sneezes these are paroxysms means bouts so how do you manage these patients of psvt by a b c and d a is better than b then c then d so a stands for adenosine b stands for beta blocker c stands for uh, calcium channel blocker especially verapamil and d is for digoxin so these are the important therapies for patients of psvt drugs which causes torsade is de pointes which is in a french word meaning twisting of the points in the ecg as we see a normal ecg pq rst having a specific points which is a normal ecg but in this patient of torsade is de pointes meaning twisting of the points the points of the p or the q or the rst is altered that's why it's called in french as torsade is de pointes or twisting so which are the drugs which can lead to this maybe twisting of points or torsade points is mnemonic cheap okay so c for cisapride which is a what is a prokinetic agent which has been banned haloperidol spelling mistake is that p this is not p a it is p e which is a anti psychotic drug typical one antibiotic erythromycin e amiodarone and arsenium and anti arrhythmic drug procainamide so these are the drugs causing torsade is pointes okay there is another maybe mnemonic called as apache you can see apache the viker okay same things a for amiodarone procainamide arsenic uh, then this thing uh, cisapride haloperidol and erythromycin okay adverse effects of beta blockers a very frequent theory question as well as maybe your viva question is how to remember a bald fish a bald boy holding a fish in his hand bald fish so what is bald b for bronchoconstriction b for bradycardia a for arrhythmias okay it can lead to bradyarrhythmias not tachyarrhythmias or increase in heart rate it will cause decrease in the heart rate l for lethargy d for disturbance in the glucose metabolism f for fatigue i for insomnia s for sexual dysfunction and h for hypotension okay so these are some of the classical adverse effects of beta blocker therapy immediate treatment of myocardial infarction patient has come with a severe chest pain of myocardial infarction okay you give to relieve the pain you give morphine you have to give oxygen also you have to give nitrate therapy also like nitroglycerin okay and you can have to compulsorily give a low dose acetylsalicylic salicylic acid or aspirin or the brand name ecosprin in a low dose not the conventional dose which is used for anti inflammatory or analgesic use which is not used nowadays frequently or not used at all but aspirin is only used in a low dose as a antiplatelet action for the primary or secondary prevention of your myocardial infarction so that is mona morphine oxygen nitroglycerin and aspirin immediate treatment of myocardial infarction as you can see the diagram of mona lisa how is ventricular tachycardia there is a spelling mistake tachycardia treatment by 
lamb you can see the heart in the lamb okay so lidocaine amyo or lignocaine amyodarone mexilitin or magnesium or a beta blocker okay yeah again the same thing how do you treat supraventricular tachycardia or psvt abcd we have discussed there is one more addition that is excitation that is vagal stimulation so these are the ways by which you can manage the patient of supraventricular tachycardia okay which are the osmotic diuretic remember mnemonic mug okay you are passing urine okay in the mug the patient is passing urine in the mug so m for mannitol u for urea and g for glycerol examples of potassium sparing diuretics is seat okay okay the patient is seated on the kidney with potassium outside not inside because of the potassium sparing diuretic okay potassium is outside the blood vessel or maybe outside the kidneys okay so s for spironolactone e for epilirinone a for amyloride and t for triamterene okay so these are the examples of potassium sparing diuretics loop diuretics okay examples with the mnemonic you can remember leak over the can so there is a leak over this can so what is this mnemonic stand for l for loop diuretics like furosemide o for osmotic diuretics as discussed mug t for thiazide diuretics like your hydrochlorothiazide c for carbonic anhydrase inhibitors like your acetazolamide used systemically or dorsolamide used to topically for patients of glaucoma a for aldosterone inhibitors as you saw potassium sparing diuretics pyrolactone and for sodium channel blockers okay so these are the examples of your diuretics that completes cardiovascular system now coming to endocrine system the uses of bromocriptine can be remembered by the mnemonic dopamine okay so d for diabetes mellitus where it is also used o for over secretion sorry o for over secretion of prolactin then p for parkinsonism a for acromegaly okay i for inhibition of uh, m for milk suppression inhibition so it secretes inhibits a milk uh, milk secretion okay that is suppression of lactation so those are the mnemonics to remember the uses of bromocriptin very important clinically patients some of the patients can develop this lactic acidosis when they are given these biguanides like metformin another by example of biguanide is fenformin which has been banned because of this side effect of lacto lactic acid itself metformin doesn't cause so much but in certain category of patients it can lead to lactic acidosis so how to remember those patients is the mnemonic law rels l for liver disease a for alcoholics u for unstable congestive heart failure hemodynamically unstable patients of congestive heart failure r for renal dysfunction e for elderly patients l for patients having a history of lactic acidosis because of any form s for severe hypoxemia okay or low oxygen concentration so those are the mnemonics or that is the mnemonic for patients which can develop lactic acidosis because of this anti diabetic metformin side effects and contraindications of glucocorticoids can be remembered by the code glucocorticoid itself g for glaucoma on topical use of corticosteroids m l for um, uh, limb muscle atrophy the limbs will become thinned out as you can see in that diagram in your textbooks c for moon phase or cushing syndrome o for osteoporosis c for cataract on systemic use o for osteone osteonecrosis which is the avascular necrosis especially of the hip bone or the femur r for renal failure where it is contraindicated t for tuberculosis where it is contraindicated especially of the ileocecal tb again c for congestive heart failure where it is contraindicated because of the potential of developing sodium and water retention which can also lead to next <coughs> sorry problem that is o that is <coughs> edema 
high for infections because of the immunosuppressant properties of corticosteroids, B for diabetes mellitus, and S for suppression of the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. So these are some of the mnemonics to be remembered as an adverse effects and contraindication of glucocorticoids. Then beneficial effects of this tamoxifen, which is a SERM, S-E-R-M, which stands for Selective Estrogen Re uh, Receptor Modulator, is triple B. One B for bone. It reduces bone resorption. Therefore, it can be given patients of osteoporosis. It uh, maintains the calcium level. Second B for breast. So it prevents breast ca carcinoma or ca 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 cancers. Third B for blood that it has a positive effect on the blood cholesterol, that is, it reduces the LDL and increases the HDL. Okay, so those are the beneficial effects of corticosteroids. Next, indication of mifepristone is again a mnemonic mifepristone. M for meningioma, I for induction of abortion, that is given to maybe cause uh, uh, termination of the pregnancies. Okay along with misoprostol, which is a prostaglandin analog, F for fibroid, E for endometriosis, R for uh, breast cancer, which are uh, progesterone receptor positive, and uh, I for increase in steroids, that is Cushing's syndrome. Okay. So increased steroids, I, S. Okay. Yeah. So th that is a mnemonic for the indications of mifepristone, then protective effects of oral contraceptives, that is, you can remember the code other benefits. Okay, oral contraceptives other benefits. Okay, so other O ovarian cyst, B benign breast disease, E for ectopic pregnancy it prevents, N for prevents neoplasia especially of the ovaries, endometrium and the colon, E for endometriosis, <clears throat> F for it prevents fibroids, it helps in relieving of the iron deficiency anemia in patients of menorrhagia where there is excessive loss of uh, blood, T for tension, that is premenstrual tension syndrome. Just before the menses or onset of menses, the ladies or the females will get this, uh, some maybe problems. S for skeletal benefits, that is patients of rheumatoid arthritis and osteoporosis. It is beneficial in nature. Now coming to central nervous system, uh, adverse effects of anti-epileptic phenytoin, Code is milk or mnemonic is milk oath. M for megaloblastic anemia because of the deficiency of B12. I is inhibition of the insulin release, therefore, it can cause to hyperglycemia. L for lymphadenopathy. K is vitamin K deficiency. O is osteomalacia. A is ataxia, very important, and arrhythmias. T for very important teratogenicity. H for again for very important hirsutism or excessive uh, hair growth and gum hypertrophy, hypertrophy of gums. That is milk oath, the adverse effects of phenytoin. Adverse effects of another anticonvulsant, valproate is valproate. V for vomiting, A for alopecia, L for liver damage, P for PCOD, that is polycystic ovarian disease or pancreatitis, R for rash. Just a minute. My battery is getting lowered, so just give me a minute.
yeah sorry for the disturbance yeah so those are the side effects mnemonic of valproate okay then uses of antipsychotics code is antipsychotic that is anti for anti emetic effect okay some uh, antipsychotics are used like uh, promethazine so psychosis psy psychosis CHO chorea, one of the sort of a muscular disorder, and tick. That is tick disorders. That is Guillain Dela Tourette syndrome. Okay, it's a tick disorder. So these are some of the important uses of antipsychotics. Mnemonic is antipsychotic. Depression, as I told you previously, how to remember is depression. The uses or indications of depression. D for depression. E for aneurysis or nocturnal aneurysis. Bed wetting. Classical agent which is used is imipramine. P for phobia. R for recurrent panic attacks. E for eating disorders like bulimia. S for smoking cessation, especially bupropion. S for stress disorder, especially post-traumatic stress disorder. I for impulse disorder like kleptomania, where the patient just steals something like stealing from the hotels, like spoons and vessels, etc. Okay, anything from people's houses, kleptomania, impulse disorder, I, O for OCD, that is obsessive compulsive disorder, and N for neuropathic pain. This is the mnemonic for the use of antidepression, antidepressants, that is depression. Then drugs causing disulfiram like reaction is a mnemonic C, GMP or cyclic GMP, C for different Cs, that is your cephalosporins like cephoparazone, Cephotritan, Cephomandol, and antidiabetic chlorpromide, chlorpropamide. That is a C, which can cause disulfiram like reaction, and GMP, G for griseofulvin, which is an antifungal drug. M, this is the most important example metronidazole, moxaractam, and procarbazine, anti uh, cancer agent procarbazine. Okay, so that is a mnemonic for drugs causing disulfiram like. Reaction C GMP drugs which reduce the alcohol craving is none of the above. That is N for naltrexone, O for antiemetic ondansetron, T for topiramate, the newer generation anti epileptic agent, and A for acamprosate. That is the drug specifically used for uh, reducing the alcohol craving. So, none. Of the above. Okay, this is how you can remember these drugs. As I told you, same thing. Okay, use of anti depression, same thing. Drugs for migraine prophylaxis is a mnemonic. As I told you in the initial stage, very volatile pharmacological agents for migraine prophylaxis. So, very V, Verapamil, V again for valproic acid, P for pizotifen. A for amitriptyline, F for flunarazine, a calcium channel blocker, ergot derivative M for methysergide, and beta blocker P, that is propanolol. So that is migraine prophylaxis drugs. As I told you, antipsychotics, antipsychotic. Which are the short acting benzodiazepine? Stole, that is uh, short acting triazolam and timazepam, oxazepam. Lorazepam and Estazolam. So these are the short acting benzodiazepines, anti anxiety hypnotic agents. Drugs used for bipolar disorders is voltage. You give electric current to the patient's head. Okay. So voltage or a pole. Okay. So voltage. So what is voltage? V for valproate, oxcarbazepine, carbamazepine. Okay. Similar category. L for lithium or lamotrigine. Topiramate T antipsychotics, atypical antipsychotics are preferred over typical ones, and G for gabapentin. Okay, G and E gabapentin. Okay, so voltage is a mnemonic for drugs using bipolar disorder. Drugs used in trigeminal neuralgia is LGBT. Okay, CP. Okay, that is lamotrigine, gabapentin, baclofen. That is a central uh, skeletal muscle relaxant, topiramate, carbamazepine. There is an anti epileptic, which is a drug of choice, and anti epileptic, another anti epileptic, 
that is phenytoin. So these are the drugs used for trigeminal neuralgia. Phenytoin side effects I had told you, but this is a visual way by which you can remember. Okay. Morphine side effects. Again, the mnemonic is morphine. M for meiosis, pinpoint pupils, out of it. Means the patient is out. Means the patient is sedated. R for respiratory depression. M for pneumonia, that is aspiration pneumonia. H for hypotension. I for infrequency, that is infrequency of stools, passing stool, that is constipation. And infrequency of passing urine, that is urinary retention. N for nausea and E for emesis, that is vomiting. Which are the SSRIs, that is the antidepressant, selective serotonin receptor inhibitors. These SSRIs examples is the indication that is it is effective for sadness, panic and compulsions. EFSPC, that is escitalopram, fluoxetine, fluoxamine, sertraline, paroxetine and citalopram. So these are the examples of our SSRIs remembered by this mnemonic effective for sadness, panic and compulsions. Drugs causing megaloblastic anemia is maple. Maple syrup you have to give in patients having B12 deficiency. As you can see, RBCs which are having B12 deficiency. Okay, So maple, methotrexate, used for rheumatoid arthritis or anti-cancer agent. A for AZT or zidovidine or anti-HIV agent. Phenytoin, liver disease can also lead to your B12 deficiency. And ethanol can also lead to, as we all know, can lead to megaloblastic anemia. Difference between these prostaglandins and thromboxin A2, prostaglandin I2 specifically, or prostacycline. It's also called as prostacycline. Okay. As on the effect on the platelets, PGI2 will inhibit the platelet aggregation, whereas thromboxin A2 is a potent platelet aggregator. So that are the difference or those are the differences on platelet effects of your uh, prostacyclines and thromboxin A2. Now coming to anesthetic like a halothane, how, how do you remember the properties? Again, the mnemonic halothane CC, not triple C, two Cs, okay. H for hyperthermia, that is malignant hyperthermia. A for arrhythmias, that is adrenaline sensitizes the heart to develop arrhythmias. L for liver toxicity, sorry. L for liver toxicity, O for orthostatic hypotension, T tocolytic agents, H for heart, that it's a cardiac depressant activity, it reduces the cardiac output. A for, sorry, A for asthma, it's a bronchodilator, that it's a safe in patients of bronchial asthma. NE, it is non-explosive, so halothane, C for chills, that is patients will develop post anesthetic, anesthetic shivering or chills and C it is safe in children. Okay, so that is a mnemonic for the properties of anesthetic halothane. Properties of ketamine is ketamine. K, K for kids, it can, it's a drug of choice as an anesthetic agent in children, kids. It can develop emergency reaction, means the patients after being uh, uh, coming out from ketamine anesthesia will develop hallucinations, illusions, vivid dreams. Okay. Then T for thalo, it's a, the site of action is thalamocortical junction. Okay. And this is responsible for its dissociative anesthesia. This is the classical examples of drugs causing dissociative anesthesia where the patient dissociates his body from his thoughts. So he will feel he's somewhere outside he will start hallucinating. So that is a classical example of ketamine. Many times when the viva it is asked, can you give an example of a drug causing dissociative anesthesia? That is ketamine. Then uh, A for analgesia. It's, uh, it has the maximum analgesic property amongst all anesthetics. So analgesic property, meals, M, it can be given in full stomach. Normally when we give anesthesia, the patient is NBM the previous on the previous night or the day. That is nil by mouth. The patient should not have a full stomach. It should have an empty stomach. But ketamine can be given on a full stomach or full meal. 
I for increases all the pressure, intracranial, ocular, and the blood pressure. N for its NMDA receptor antagonist, that is N-methyl D aspartate antagonist. And E, it is excellent for asthmatic patients as well, like your halothane. Okay, it is safe. So those are the properties of ketamine to remember. Drugs used for day care surgery is by the code Dr. Manmohan Singh is a prime minister. That is Dr. Desflurin Manmohan, that is Midazolam, which is a benzodiazepine. Singh, Sevoflurane is isoflurane, is, is isoflurane. A for alfentanil, which is a morphine derivative like sufentanil. Okay, ramifentanil. Prime is propofol. And minister is mimacurium, which is a muscle relaxant. So these are some of the drugs useful for day care surgery. Some are anesthetic, some are anxiolytics, some are muscle relaxants, some are analgesics. Okay, so that is an example of a balanced anesthesia. Coming to hemat, drugs causing megaloblastic, uh, megaloblastic anemia. Again, a different one, a mnemonic prime batsman. Prime is primidone, and is uh, anti epileptic agent, phenytoin. B, B12 deficiency, A, alcohol, T for trimethoprim, which is a sulfonamide derivative or maybe an antibiotic, which is combined with sulfonamides. L, S is sulfasalazine, which can be used for uh, inflammatory bowel disorders. M for metformin, antidiabetic agent. A for antifolates, like methotrexate, pyrimethamine, and antimalarial, and proguanil, also an antimalarial. And N for nitrous oxide. Which is a inhalational anti uh, anesthetic agent, also called as laughing gas. Parental anticoagulants is head, heparin, inoxaparin, ergotrobran, and deltiparin. Okay, so these are the parental anticoagulants. Okay, thrombolytic agents, mnemonic USA, that is urokinase, streptokinase, and altiplase. Okay, so those are the thrombolytic agents. Properties of HMG coa reductase inhibitors, which are used as anti uh, sorry, uh, hypolipidemic agents. Side effects include H, that is hepatotoxicity, M for myositis, that is rhabdomyolysis, the mnemonic being HMG C coa. Okay, contraindications is G, that is girl during pregnancy, growing children. They should not be given and drug interactions again. C C for comarin and cyclosporin. So those are the properties or the side effects associated with HMJ QA reductase inhibitor, HMG C. Example in this category include drugs like eterovastatin, simvastatin, pravastatin, revastatin, etc. How to differentiate in the uses of misoprostol versus indomethacin? In cases of patent ductus arteriosus, mes o prostol will open the patent ductus arteriosus. As I told you that time, prostaglandin analogs will open the or maintain the patent ductus arteriosus. Whereas indomethacin C will close the patent ductus arteriosus. Okay, so this is how you differentiate mesoprostol, which is given to open the PDA and indomethacin, which is given to close the PDA, O and C. Okay. Coming to the last, that is antibiotics. Drugs which can be used safely in renal diseases code is Dancer, D for doxycycline, A for ampicillin, N for nafcillin, C for cephalosporins, including cefoparazone and ceftriaxone, the third generation cephalosporins, E for macrolide erythromycin and R for rifampicin. Even clindamycin is safe in renal diseases. Okay, so the dancer is a mnemonic for antibiotic safe in renal dysfunction. Acid resident uh, resistant penicillins code is vodka. V for penicillin V, O for oxacillin, D for dicloxacillin. Uh, K for cloxacillin, okay, you can remember this as cloxacillin K, okay, and A for ampicillin and amoxicillin. So those are the examples of acid-resistant penicillins. Anti-pseudomonal penicillins, you can remember by the mnemonic CT map, C for carbonicillin, T for ticarcillin, M for mesloscillin, A for azlocillin, and P for piperacillin.
principal uses of penicillin G is a blast man. Okay, L for leptospirosis, A for actinomyces, S for streptococcus or staphylococcus. That is non-penicillin producing staphylococcus stains. Okay, T for tryponema or tetanus, M for meningococcus, and A N for anthrax. Okay, but ciprofloxacin it can be used as a drug of first choice. But this is penicillin G is also an indication for anthrax uh, disease. Okay. Uses of tetracycline, RBC in plasma, R for rickettsia or relaxing fever, B for brucellosis, C for cholera and chlamydia, I for inguinal, that is granuloma inguinal, P for plague, peptic ulcers as a, what is a, a combination therapy, okay, and a pleurodesmosis, L for lymphogranuloma venereum, A for atypical pneumonia, S for SIADH, that is syndrome of inappropriate ADH secretion, M for malaria, and A for amoebiasis. Adverse effects of tetracycline, Kapil Dev, K for kidney failure, A for anti anabolic effect, P for photosensitivity, which is maximum with demaclocycline, I for diabetes insipidus, again maximum with demaclocycline, L for liver toxicity. That is hepatic necrosis it can cause. D for it affects the dentition of the teeth and causes bone defects. E for expired, expired tetracyclines which can lead to Fanconi syndrome. And uh, V for vestibular dysfunction which is maximum with minocycline. So those are the mnemonics for Kapil Dave is a mnemonic for side effects of tetracyclines. Uses of macrolides is a uh, mnemonic claw. C for chancroid, cornibacterium diphtheriae, and campylobacter. L for legionella infections. A for atypical pneumonia. W for whooping cough caused by bordetella pertussis. Okay. So that is a mnemonic for your uses of macrolides. Uses of specifically azithromycin and clarithromycin, which are the macrolides, is a mnemonic chat. C for chlamydia. H for H influenzae. A for my AVM complex, that is mycobacterium AVM complex, a very frequent infection seen in patients of HIV and toxoplasmosis. Okay, so that is CHAT, a mnemonic for the uses of azithromycin and clarithromycin. Adverse effects of macrolides is a mnemonic macro. M for motilin receptor agonism, that it stimulates the motilin receptors in the GI tract. Therefore, it leads to the diarrhea. And therefore, sometimes in some cases, some clinicians can give this agent macrolides to the management of your uh, constipation. A for allergy, C for uh, cholecystitis, and RRO for reversible ototoxicity. Whereas ototoxicity is a very frequent side effect of these uh, aminoglycosides like streptomycin, gentamicin, amicacin, etc. Okay. Then indications of clindamycin is PAC. Okay, P for pneumocystis gerovaki infection seen in HIV patients and plasmodium parasite. A for enorobes, very frequently used. C for cocci, that is gram positive cocci, and T for toxoplasmosis gondii. Okay, so that is PAC, the indications for clindamycin. Indications for cotrimoxazole, that is a combination of sulfomethoxazole and trimethoprim is mnemonic Punjab National Bank, P for pneumocystitis, cystitis, cystis, sorry, N for nocardia, and B for bank, that is burkholderia sepaseia, that is a, uh, this thing, infection, okay, so that is the indications for cotrimoxazole. In the adverse effects of sulfonamides, it's a ABC rash, A for aplastic anemia, B for bilirubin displacement, especially in small children where it can lead to curm icterus because the bilirubin can call, cross the blood brain barrier and damage the brain. C for crystalluria. Therefore, you should be drinking a lot of fluids when the patient is consuming these uh, sulfamides. Okay. Then rash R A S that is uh, uh, acetylation. It is metabolized by the process of acetylation which can lead to SLE, systemic lupus. Erythromatosis, this is A, S. 
and as for hemolysis especially in patients with g6pd deficiency then antibiotics effective against anaerobes is cmv that is cytomegalovirus c for clindamycin all these cephalosporins and chloramphenicol m for especially metronidazole and v for vancomycin okay so those those are the mnemonics for drugs effective against anaerobes cmv drugs which can lead to ototoxicity is deafness causing vital medicines d for diclofenac e for diuretic ethaclinic acid a for as i just now told you, aminoglycosides s for diuretic furosemide n for anti cancer nitrogen mustards e for erythro sorry e for erythromycin s for salicylates s for smoking c causing that is cisplatin v, v for vancomycin and vinblastine m for malarial drugs like quinine so those are the drugs causing ototoxicity then drugs which are effective both for hepatitis b and hiv viral infection is let that is lamivudine emtricitabine and tenofov anti tb drugs ripe that is rifampicin isoniazide pyrazinamide and ethambutol the first uh, generation or the first line anti tb drugs anti malaria um, uh, which, uh, malaria which are fast acting erythrocytic cyanocytes is mango achar m for mefloquine a for atovaquone and amadioquine c for chloroquine h for halofentrin a for artemisinins and r for rescue that is a brand name for quinine okay so these are some of the fast acting erythrocytic cyanocytes used for malarial treatment uses of chloroquine is the code red me lpg r for rheumatoid arthritis e for extra intestinal amebiasis then uh, d for d for uh discoid lupus erythematosus m for malaria i for infectious mononucleosis l for lepra reaction p for photogenic reaction and g for giardiasis okay so that is a red me lpg mnemonic for uses of the most important anti malarial drug that is chloroquine drugs for amebiasis indication indications indications for indications for your metronidazole which is the most important most important anaerobic agent for the for the treatment of amebiasis so uh, this thing mnemonic is mnemonic is gupta sorry that is giardiasis sorry giardiasis gardnerella vaginalis u for ulcer that is h pylori associated peptic ulcer disease which is used in combination treatment with antibiotics other antibiotics C for pseudo membrane colitis induced by clostridium difficile where it's a drug of choice T for trichomoniasis and A for amebiasis and anaerobic infections like bacteroides and clostridia where this metronidazole especially is a drug of choice antifungals again uses adverse effects of amphotericin B is the mnemonic amphotericin B A for anemia M for muscle spasm P for phlebitis H for headache, hypotension, and hypokalemia. O for ototoxicity. Three T for thrombocytopenia. E for MS is encephalopathy, respiratory stridor. I for increased temperature that is fever. C for chills. I for immediate hypersensitivity, very frequent anaphylaxis. N for very frequent nephrotoxicity, and B for very frequent bronchospasm. So these are the adverse effects of amphotericin to be remembered by the mnemonic. amphotericin b okay then all these we have discussed doxycycline is a drug of choice for my pink rbc that is mycoplasma plaque prophylaxis rickettsia borella brucella chlamydia and cholera okay tetracycline adverse effects we have already discussed chlorum uh, kapil dev chlorum phenicol uh, sorry uh, this in chloroquine use we have already discussed okay inh side effects important to remember is inducer it is inducer of uh, uh, 
enzymes okay cytochrome p450 enzymes n for neuropathy peripheral neuropathy and h for it causes hemolysis in g6pd deficiency patients okay then clinical use of metronidazole get gap giardia entamoeba trichomonas gardenella anaerobic infections and h pylori uh, pylori anti and uh, microbial agents contraindicated in pregnancy very important to remember safe moms take really good care so what is this safe sulforamides amino glycosides fluoroquinolones and erythromycin moms m metronidazole tetracycline uh, ribavirin griseofulvin and chloramphenicol reddish discoloration of urine is caused by okay these d okay that is doxorubicin donorubicin and rifampicin this is r okay red r e d rifampicin doxorubicin and donorubicin okay rifampicin important points is again mnemonic rifampicin r is rna polymerase inhibitor or reddish orange discoloration of the secretions intestinal nephritis flu like symptoms anemia maximum sidal or sterilizing effect of rifampicin on pb bacilli it decreases the platelet count inducer of enzyme contraceptive failure because of enzyme induction inr is having drug interactions with warfarin and along with nnrt and pp uh, protease inhibitors it will lead to their failure so these are some of the important properties of rifampicin uses of tetracyclines are these tetracyclines uh, tet rickettsia atypical pneumonia cholera lyme disease chlamydia lgv and granuloma inguinal inguinal and epidemics of plague okay anti cancers uses of methotrexate is inhibits cancer methotrexate inhibits cancer so i for it's a immunosuppressant c for crohn's disease A for abortion, N for NHL that is non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, C for Coria carcinoma, E for ectopic pregnancy, and R for rheumatoid arthritis. So those are the indications of your uh, uh, methotrexate. And I think this is the last slide, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, drugs used for the rehabilitation of alcoholism is and. Again, we have discussed similar thing in the past. A for acamprosate, N for naltrexone, which is an opioid antagonist, and D for disulfiram okay anti gout drugs is drugs like caps colchicine allopurinol probenecid and sulfin pyrazole so i think with that we cover this uh, extended session of these uh, these topics on pharmacology mnemonics okay uh, that was a extensive session uh, any doubts maybe from this thing Though this was also a dry topic and a topic which doesn't require any explanation, you have to just maybe remember or mug up these topics, okay? But in spite of that, if anyone has any doubts, I'm open for any discussion or clarification. Over to you people as audience. Yes, sir, it was a very extensive and comprehensive session, sir, and we are. I know, I know, it's an extensive this. session. We are actually very thankful for this, sir. We need such a session. because uh, uh, these things uh, make uh, learning fun and easy so yeah yeah that's the basic objective of maybe pharmacology is to make the topic as uh, easy as remembering as possible yeah sir actually knowledge becomes power only when we understand what we learn and uh, this purpose is served by your book actually so, yeah, so yeah. many and so many flow charts uh, that actually amazes me sir Uh, okay, I okay. actually love it, and uh, thank you so much for this session, sir. And uh, we have some doubts, like yeah, sure. uh, out of the box, like uh, how uh, pharmacology can be taken as our uh, career, sir. So again, as as I uh, maybe like uh, said, I was a, a person in both academics as well as in the industry, and frankly speaking, this is uh, another big session which can be taken up. Okay, uh, which requires a lot of discussion, which can require a lot of time. But the only summary points which I can tell is that pharmacology is a very good maybe option if anyone is not interested in clinical and 
another thing i want to tell you is that i opted for pharmacology out of choice maybe the people who are listening let me tell you i had opted pharmacology out of choice not as a maybe remaining option to tell you frankly i was getting orthopedics i during my career i was getting orthopedics i was getting surgery in bombay hospital which i had refused and my colleagues were surprised that i had put pharmacology as a, my first choice and medicine pediatrics etc as my second cho- third choices or whatever during our maybe your uh, counseling so that is the importance of pharmacology important maybe options of uh, after pharmacology is that you can join the industry from day one after you finish md pharmacology and your income or earning in high amount will start from day one without any investment no liabilities only assets and being a pharmacologist during our area we could travel throughout india but in the present era if you are very good if you are very dynamic you can travel throughout the world and let me tell you uh, if anyone is in the academics maybe they can vouch for it the amount of salary which a person can draw is nearly five times that of the salary which a person in the academic is drawing it's a very exciting job you can meet different kind of people and you can if you are very dynamic enough you can reach to a level of a md of an organization also or a ceo of an organization also so that is the power of pharmacology okay so those are the important aspects in detail if require any time maybe like you can have some specific audience and we can try to clarify their doubts maybe over a small session sure sir i think this is an unknown treasure gold of, of opportunity yes Which, yes yeah and uh, we have some doubts like um, how uh, our book textbook of pharmacology is going to serve the purpose of the university exam and neat pg exam so so your view my book my book you're saying yes sir yeah see as i told you uh, we or myself and thema publishers had a specific objective in mind when we initiated this project that two years hence or two years earlier we had this traditional curriculum and many of us we knew ki from 2020 2021 we'll be having this cbme based curriculum it's a lot of changes so instead of we like publishing a standard traditional type of a book why not publish a book which will serve the theoretical needs and it is generally the theory where the candidate usually has difficulties and many of them frankly they fail in the theory passing in the practicals is not difficult in fact failing in practicals is difficult frankly speaking okay but you should not take it in a lighter way so with that intention in mind we had a specific objective that to come out with a theory textbook specifically with the cbme based curriculums where we have covered all the competencies of pharmacology in details with lot of as you said lot of images flow charts diagrams and as i told you in the in the beginning stages no other book of pharmacology has this competency mapping with other subjects of horizontal as well as vertical integration okay with the page numbers so that is a plus point and again to reiterate again to repeat the same point which i told you in the beginning the biggest another advantage of this book besides these advantages is that it is a multi contributor book which has been contributed by the people or the faculty members from the lowest rung to the highest rung from people not only from india but people from abroad like usa malaysia dubai etc so those are the important advantages and for the next exam many times as i had i was repeat i was telling in the past in the other sessions also i tell frequently is that even in the cbme exams of the theory even in the neat or the next pattern type of examinations many of the mcqs will be clinically case based oriented questions mcqs so our book will at the end of the chapter will have or has all these case based mcqs which the other any other conventional textbooks will not have so that is the biggest advantages of our book in the present big context yes sir so thank you so much sir my yeah. deepest gratitude from a student side to give this amazing book from your side so, yes ma'am yeah we are so thankful sir and uh, i am also thankful for the thema publishers who actually uh, 
for actually sponsoring us uh, for uh, so many quiz programs and uh, bringing the renowned authors to our platform, also uh, giving valuable books for discounted prices to our members. And uh, the thing is that uh, our dear members, Tima Publishers uh, uh, announced a discount of 30%. So you can purchase by using the code WA30. I hope uh, everyone can listen. That is a uh, WA30. So uh, sure, taking this uh, quote of uh, information. So thank you so much, sir, again.